It's 2024 and the AI apocalypse is here and nobody wants to do anything manually, especially astrophotographers. My name is Ali Labedli and welcome to Astra Pharma. In my last StellarMate Pro tutorial, I showed you the exact steps that you needed to take for you to run the StellarMate Pro with any of your equipment. I showed you how to set up your equipment profile. I showed you how to polar align and how to focus your scope and how to run a simple imaging session. Well, it's about time I made a video about the Eco Scheduler, just like I promised in the last video, to help you take your astrophotography using the StellarMate Pro to the next level. Before we begin, I want to explain some of the terminology used in the StellarMate Pro and the ECOS ecosystem. So, the term sequence refers to the sequential capturing of frames that your imaging camera executes as specified by you. In general, an imaging sequence would be something like take 10 frames, each 60 seconds long, of a given filter, at a given gain, offset and temperature, basically similar to Nina's Lexi sequencer or for example the ASI Air's auto run. What I want to show you today however is how to take that sequence and create a complex job for your telescope to execute. A job unlike a simple sequence would include all the things that you would normally do manually, wrap them in a neat and intelligent package and then execute it based on the limits and the constraints that you specify. A job would therefore include everything from slewing to targets, aligning and centering, capturing and guiding beforehand as well. Even if you have an observatory dome, it would control that for you. You can also be very picky and specific about the constraints and limits for your telescope. And once everything is ready and set up and programmed in properly, it's a simple matter of starting everything up and letting ECOS take the wheel, basically. So without further ado, let's turn on the StellarMate and go through the scheduler together. Okay, so here we are on the app. We're connected and ready. Let's open up the scheduler by clicking the top left notebook looking icon. And as you can see here, we have the target, the coordinates and the sequence on the left of the screen. And we also have the start and stop button. And on the right, we have the job queue. Don't worry about all of this just yet. We'll go through everything step by step. Next to target, we have the crosshair icon where you can select your target. And then you have the gear icon where you can actually access your settings. Next to the coordinates, you have this button right here, which is the mosaic planner. I'm not gonna show you how to create a mosaic, but just know that you have that option and in the future, we're gonna explain it. Then you have your sequence. I showed you in the last video how to create a sequence. In here, you would basically save that sequence and then load it up and add it to a job. I'm gonna show you all of that as well later on. So let's check out all the settings within the scheduler before we proceed with anything else. Click on the gear icon and you'll be presented with the general settings. Here, you have your FITS files and where to save them. So I think the default uh, location is gonna be StellarMate Pictures. And then you wanna select your profile. I'm gonna select the current profile that I have. And then you wanna specify the steps you want the scheduler to take for each job. So we want it to track, to focus, to align, and to guide. And then you can specify your position angle. I don't have a rotator here, so I'm gonna leave it blank like this. Next, we have job startup. So here you would specify when you want the scheduler to start each job. So I have it here set as soon as possible, or you can have it start on a specific date and time. Next, we have job constraints. And here you would set up the constraints you want for your scheduler. So for example, you have altitude, moon, weather, twilight, and horizon. Altitude basically means if a target is below a certain altitude, it would not execute a job or schedule it. Moon as well is self-explanatory. If a target is within a specific distance of the moon, it's not gonna schedule or execute the job. You can also enable weather constraints. So if the weather is not suitable for astrophotography, it's not gonna execute or schedule a job. And then you have the twilight and artificial horizon options. You can set up the offsets for these later on in the settings. Next, we have job completion. In here, you would specify what you want the scheduler to do. When the job is finished, I have sequence completion enabled, which means that when it's finished, it's finished. You can have it repeat for however many times you want, or you can have it repeat until terminated. What that means is it's gonna keep on repeating the jobs until you specify for it to stop, even over the span of many days. So if you have a long project, you can select repeat until terminated, and it's gonna keep on capturing those same targets until you tell it to stop or you can have it repeat until a specific date and time. Next, we have abort job where you can specify what you want the scheduler to do if a job is aborted. So I have it set to queue, which means that it's gonna reschedule that job when all the current jobs or the other jobs are completed. You can have it set to none, which means that it's not gonna reschedule the aborted job or have it set to immediate, which means that it's gonna reschedule that job immediately. Next, we have the scheduler settings. These are quite extensive, so we're gonna go through them one by one. First, we have lead time, which is the minimum amount of minutes between a job and the scheduler will actually start a job before its scheduled time by this many minutes. This can be useful for the scheduler to align the target, center it, focus the scope, calibrate guiding and the like. Next, we have pre-dawn. I have it here set at 30. I think that's the default settings actually. 
This basically means that the scheduler will not permit any job to be scheduled or executed past this many minutes before dawn. Preemptive shutdown basically means that if there's no job scheduled or due within this many hours, it's going to perform a shutdown procedure. Next, we have setting altitude cutoff, which I have no idea what it means, so we're just going to leave it as it is. Then we have the dust offset and the dawn offset. This is going to be a positive or a negative value based on the offset that you need for your astronomical darkness at dawn and dusk. So continuing on, we have alignment, verify captured image position every two frames I have selected here. So it's going to verify the position of the image after capturing two frames. And if the error is beyond 30 arc minutes, it's going to reset the pipeline. And then you have different options here. Reset mount model on alignment failure, reset mount model before starting each job, force realignment before restarting jobs and restart alignment on guiding calibration failure. And then we have observatory startup. I don't have a dome, so I simply have on park mount enabled and observatory shutdown. I simply have warm CCD and park mount enabled. So let's actually go ahead now and create a scheduler job. There are two ways to add a target into the scheduler. The first simply being by opening the planetarium by clicking on sky and searching for the target that you need. So I'm going to search for M101, for example. I'll click on it and then I'll click on schedule. So that should send the coordinates and the target into the scheduler. So let's go back to ECOS, close off the settings. And as you can see here, the target and the coordinates have been inputted into the scheduler. And then you select your sequence. So you can create a sequence from right here, or you can go back to the sequencer and create a preset. And I'm going to call this preset M101. I want it to be in light frame, so I'll have L selected. Let's say I want to capture two minute exposure, so I'll have 120 inputted. I want the binning to be one by one and the format to be raw 16 bits. I want to capture them in fits and I want the temperature to be zero degrees Celsius. I want the gain to be 100 and the offset to be 50 and I want to dither every frame. So I'm going to click on save and that should save the preset. And now when I go back to the scheduler, I can simply click on the folder icon and load the sequence into the, the scheduler. Oh, before you do that, you actually need to save the sequence. So let's go back to the camera and click on add to sequence. The count here is the amount of frames that you want to capture. So let's say I want to capture 10 frames and then I'm going to click on add to sequence and then click on the floppy disk icon to save the sequencer or to save the sequence. I'll click on the check mark and that should save the sequence. So now when I go back to the scheduler, I'll search for the sequence and there it is. And now I can simply click on add. So that actually scheduled the job for M101. And now you can add multiple jobs to the scheduler with different targets. And I'm going to show you how to do that from within the scheduler module. So you want to click the crosshair icon, select your catalog. So for example, I'm going to select the Messier catalog and I'm going to select my second target, which is going to be M63. Let me put a space between those, M63. I'll select that and I'm going to click on select and that's going to input that target and the coordinates for it into the scheduler. And you can also create your sequence from within the scheduler as well. And then I can click on the plus sign with the three dashed lines and I can actually program my sequence from within the scheduler module just like that. And I can select 60 second exposure frames. I want the format to be raw 16 bits. I want them encoded in fits and I want to capture 10 frames as well. I want the temperature to be the same at zero degrees, the gain to be 100, the offset to be 50 and I want to dither every frame. And I'm going to click on add and finish. So that actually added that sequence into the scheduler. And now when I click on the plus sign, I have my second target added to the scheduler. So without further ado, let's go up to the roof and execute the scheduler and see what it does. Okay, everybody, so I'm here on the rooftop. I've polar lined my telescope and I've actually started the scheduler. As you can see, the M101 job has been scheduled for 8.29 and the M64 job is scheduled for 8.36. I've reduced the exposure to 10 seconds each just because I want to go through the entire demonstrations with you guys. It is now 8.16. So as we wait for the scheduler to start, I just want to tell you a few things. Before you even start using the scheduler, it's advised that you actually optimize all of your settings. That would include your focus settings, your guide settings, just because once you start using the scheduler, you're not going to be able to input these things or correct them while the scheduler is working. So, like I said, it is best for you guys to optimize all of your settings before you even start thinking about using the scheduler. Okay, everybody, so it should start any minute now. It is 8.28. So in a minute, things should start to happen. Let's see how it goes. Okay, so it said observatory startup. 
Eco's job started and Mount is now slewing to the first location. So let's give it a minute to reach its position. And there it is. And the autofocus operation has started. So far, so good. So let's follow the autofocus. And autofocus should complete any second now. There it is. Autofocus completed. So I think the next step would be to center the target. Yep, so mount is correcting itself right now. The center of the target in the middle of the frame and successful. So it should calibrate guiding now. And there it is, guiding is being calibrated. And by the way, you can let this do its thing without you even following it. You can turn off your iPad, you can go to bed. Everything will simply happen in the background without you having to worry about any of this. I'm just following the progress to demonstrate the scheduler working. And there we go. We are now guiding, hopefully. And we're setting the target temperature for the CCD. I didn't cool it down all the way because it's really hot right now and I don't want to ruin my camera. So we're guiding at 1.2 RMS, not the best, but you know, we'll take it for now. And we're now capturing. So let's wait for the first frame to download. There it is. You can barely see anything because the sky is very light polluted, but we have our first frame. And you can follow the progress of the scheduler by opening the module up. As you can see, we have now two frames out of 10 and we're capturing the third. So I'll get back to you before we switch to the second job. Okay, everybody, so we've just finished capturing all of the frames for M101 and we're now switching to the next job, which is M64. As you can see, the mount has started slewing to the second target. And it just arrived. So let's see what happens now. Oh, it corrected its position, centering the target in the, in the frame. And it just confirmed its position. And it's setting the temperature. So as you can see, we're now capturing the second job. This time we're able to discern some of the structure of the galaxy, but like I said, this is only a demonstration. And I'll get back to you before this job is completed, just to see whether the mount parks or not. So, see you in a second. Okay everybody, so the sequences are all completed now, and the job is done. And as you can see, the mount is parking by itself, without me having to touch it or do anything. And the mount has been parked. So we're all done. Let's have a look at the frames we've captured. So I'm going to click on view. And as you can see, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 frames for M64. They're not the best frames, like I said, but there it is. Right there in the middle, M64. And let's have a look at the second target, or the first one. M101. There's barely anything that we can see. <laughs> because of all the light pollution, but nonetheless, we have the frames that we needed captured. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. It is currently 40 degrees Celsius out here, so I would appreciate it if you would comment, like, and subscribe. This has been Astra Pharma, and thank you for watching.